Hello and welcome to another episode of Course Creators. I'm Sarah Corden, your host, and today we are doing a podcast about podcasting. I absolutely <laughs> love this. Now, we have obviously um, just got this Course Creation podcast kickstarted after we first began back in 2015, and uh, my attention got divided in many directions, having had two babies and also taken away to uh, go and lead and direct a university for a few years as well. So my podcast had to put uh, be put to one side for a while, but we have awakened her from the dead. And as you can tell, you're listening today, we are alive and kicking and well and truly back in the flow. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about what's happened behind the scenes because business Business is tough. We kind of have to do all these things and we have this list of all the places we want to be, all the ways we want to get seen and heard and noticed in our industries. There's so many different ways to reach our audience and connect with people, to share our expertise, to make a difference in people's lives. And of course, to get that bigger audience base from which people can start coming into our business ecosystem. Now, for me, podcasting has been one of the most wonderful, exciting, and actually easiest ways of doing all of those things. Now, our guest today is my fairy godmother of the Course Creators podcast. I have today Anne Classen, who is a specialist podcast services expert. So Anne is that fairy godmother behind the scenes who will basically do everything for you from helping you strategically plan your own podcast. What are you going to do it on? Who are your audience? What type of content to create and how to get the biggest reach? She also does all of the administration, all of the tech setup, launching your podcast, connecting it to all of the directories, uh, editing the shows, creating show notes, writing blogs to go with it, even the image cards and social media posts and soundtracks to share across social media as well. And this is exactly what Anne is doing for me. Now, I remember when I first started this, I was dead keen on learning how to do it all myself. Now, you guys know I'm a bit of a learning junkie. I love to learn how stuff works and I'm a total tech geek. So I really enjoyed the process actually of learning how to edit my shows, of learning how to set it all up and connect it. But the point is we can't as business owners scale our business and reach customers if we are always in in the tech space. If we're always trying to be the technician and we're always doing the admin, well, we're going to be sacrificing making money. It's as simple as that. And so I made the decision to go out and find my fairy godmother of podcasting. And that is how we have Anne here today. Anne, it's lovely to meet you. Thank you for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Oh, thank you for that introduction. That's great. <laughs> It's going to be amazing. Now, hopefully uh, you don't get too inundated with, inundated with work to uh, not be able to help the Course Creators podcast anymore. We were having a laugh before the show started today because uh, obviously Anne always does all my editing for all of my podcasts here. And uh, she's going to have to edit this show. You're going to be editing your own voice, Anne. How does that feel? <laughs> oh, that's so weird. <laughs> not really looking forward to that, but it's all right. It's all right. Part of the job, right? <laughs> That's it. It's going to be fantastic. So my husband always says to me, Sarah, are you watching videos of yourself again? I'm like, totally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, that you can do that. Episode. Wow. <laughs> You're like listening to yourself all day doing edits. Okay, so we have Anne Clarkson here today who is going to be teaching us all about setting up a podcast. Anne is going to share with us some of her top tips on some of the things that we should think about, plan and prepare before we start a podcast. She's going to talk to us about how to make money from our podcasts and whether it's hard or not. What are some of the things or the elements or the steps that we might go through when we're creating a podcast? So thank you very much, Anne. So first question really, for these people who are thinking about creating a course, creating a course, creating a podcast, how hard is it? It's actually not that hard. Um, it's really hard to make a perfect podcast, but there's no such thing as a perfect podcast. So my advice for anyone who wants to start podcasting, just start. It will be imperfect. And if you look back to your first episode, you'll probably think a year from now, you'll think, oh my God, what was I doing? But you need to start somewhere to improve. And it's also really doable. It's, um, it's, it's a lot of work, but that's why people like me have a job to help you do it. So 
it's not that hard. It, it, it feels like this huge thing and this huge project to set up, but it's actually really doable to do it yourself. And if you don't have time for that, it's really doable to just get someone to help you. Love it. Now you are obviously, one of the great things about, I think, hiring experts to help you do stuff is they already know everything that there is available. They know all the tricks and tips. They've been inside other people's projects. And so they've got to see what works and what doesn't work. Now you've obviously listened to heaps and heaps and heaps of podcasts and their episodes. You know, you've turned your passion of loving podcasts into your own business. Um, you are in a situation now where you have listened to every show one of the things I loved about when we first started working together is that you know you said to me Sarah do you have a kind of a, an opening clip you know a sneak peek into some of the content that's going to be shared now if I was doing this on my own I'm great at tech I know what I'm doing but I didn't think oh that would be a really nice opener to tease people to go yes I want to listen to this episode so you know it, having an expert like you um, it's, it's, it's where you kind of find out the things that you don't know you didn't know. So you've been in lots of people's podcast back ends, the admin sides. Um, you know, where do people's podcast episodes actually live? So let's say, you know, someone sits down today. A lot of us are recording Zoom calls and videos and things like that. So let's say we've got a video or a Zoom call or something that we have saved the audio from. Now, where do we put it? Um, so the process is that I get the audio. From, so now you will give me the audio. I will edit it and then I upload it to a hosting platform. So there are hosting platforms that make sure that your uh, podcast will go to Spotify. You can put it on your website with a little player. It will go to Podbean, um, Apple Podcasts, all of that. So you put it in on a hosting platform and they do uh, the rest of the distribution for you. Um, so that is where your podcast lives. And that is also what I do for my clients. So um, you, you can easily do that by yourself. You just have to set it up once. And once you have that, then uh, you just like the new episodes, you um, just upload it on the, on the hosting platform and then the rest, it goes automatically. Great. And now there's um, obviously like anything, there's lots of different types of podcast hosting platforms. Can you give us some of the names of some of the ones that you know of that you've got other clients hosting their podcasts in so people can go and check them out? Um, one very popular one is Lipsyn. Um, I'm not a huge fan, to be honest. One of my clients use, uses Lipsyn, but I wouldn't really recommend it. It's, it looks really old school. It, like it has many options, but I think it's not that easy to use, to be honest. Um, so Sarah, you use podcast.co. I really love that one. It's so easy to use. It just looks nice, easy, simple. So I really like that one. And um, for my own podcast, I use Podbean. Um, so I use that for my own podcast. So that's why I, like, I obviously chose it for a reason. It's also just really easy to use. Um, just clean and simple, does what it has to do, nothing more than that. So yeah, I really, I really like Podbean as well. So for me, really? Podbean and podcast.co are um, the best ones that I work with so far. Nice. Go check them out. And in the show notes below, guys, you will find links to those directly as well to go and have a look. Now, how did you actually get into this podcasting business, Anne? Because, you know, you, you, I believe you travel around the world. You know, you're, you're in Bali at the moment, sat there with beautiful palms behind you. <laughs> I, how did you discover that this was your thing? How did you end up turning it into a business? Yeah, funny story. So I was um, back home, I was studying in university and I had my dream corporate job lined up. And then, I don't know, I woke up one day and I was like, ah, is this really what I want to do? Probably not. <laughs> um, so then, so then what? I didn't really know what to do. So I started traveling. I was planning to go travel after university anyway. So I was like, okay, I'll just go traveling and I'll figure it out or something. Um, so I started traveling, uh, just did the whole backpacking thing, went to Australia to do my working holiday, which is like really popular for Europeans. Um, so I did that. And while I was working on a strawberry farm in the middle of nowhere in Queensland, Australia, I, um, thought, okay, I want to, I don't want to go home. I want to keep traveling, but there has to be a more sustainable way than this. Um, so I looked into working online and what can you do online? And I just kind of 
rolled into podcast management. I always love podcasts. Back home, I listen to so many podcasts every day. Um, so I was always the person that said, oh, I listen to this really awesome podcast. And it's blah, blah, blah. That was always me. Um, so I don't know. I just kind of rolled into it to it and um i didn't even know that podcast manager is, is a job that people do that um but yeah i just sought myself how to do it took an online course of course yes, <laughs> and, uh, yeah <laughs> yeah so that's just how i learned it and uh set up business and been doing this for the past few months and it's been really great i love it well, you're certainly very good at it, that's for sure. So uh, no, not too many of you are allowed to steal my Anne Fairy Godmother, okay? <laughs> However, um, maybe one or two of you can sneak in there uh, before she's fully booked. Um, so look, Anne, there's, there's a number of different reasons why people choose podcasting as a medium to connect with their audience. Now, for me personally, I have found that it's a way to reach a huge amount of people very, very easily and effectively. And I love that every time you kind of publish a, an episode you have yet another opportunity to be found and people will then the new people that find new episodes will go through and listen to the older episodes so you're it's actually always growing it's always getting bigger and bigger and bigger all of the time it's kind of like that compound effect that just keeps growing and I love the fact you know as an educator I love that it is a channel from which to educate people I love it's the channel from which to market and sell I love that it's a channel from which we can collect leads in our business and get people into our business ecosystem I love that it's a way to entertain and just help people but obviously if we are a business owner we should be doing everything strategically we should be making sure that every single thing we're spending our time and effort on does in some way strategically direct us to our, our business goals and does hopefully <laughs> then make us some money so how can business owners entrepreneurs course creators experts how can we use podcasts to make money um, you can, so for me, there are three reasons why you would have, like, why you need a podcast. Like you said, it's a great content marketing tool. Um, so for all the reasons that you already listed, but also you can just, you can tell people so much in one episode, even if your episode is like relatively short, which is like 20 to 30 minutes, you can put so much information in 30 minutes. So that is great for content marketing and also your audience really gets the feeling that they get to know you. So that is um, a really good advantage of, of podcasting over like say blogging because people read it. In podcasting, people hear your voice. They hear you tell something. Um, so they really um, get a feeling with who you are as a person. They really get to know you and they get to trust you as an expert. Um, and another reason is that it's really easy to be purpose. Um, like you already said, you, from, from one podcast episode, you can make a blog post, you can make social media posts, you can provide so much value um, on different channels. So that's also a really good thing about podcasting. Um, I loved how you've been helping me do that, guys. This is one of the reasons why I like, go and get yourself a podcast manager, because you know, all I have to do is record an interview with an expert or, you know, just jump on and, and tell my stories and, and deliver the kind of information that I'm delivering on, the, on this. And Anne has been turning one video <laughs> into like this app absolute confetti explosion of content you know Anne has literally taken my videos she's transcribed them she's made show notes with them she's put them up on my blog with a blog article underneath it she's created what are they what do you call them the sound waves the audiograms audiograms see there's all these techie terms so and maybe these audiograms right <laughs> it's like a visual uppy downy sound video image thingy right that's technical terminology right exactly. there exactly <laughs> put it on my social media you've been creating the image cards to promote it on my social media chucking it all in my buffer account like i just find this amazing you, yeah guys getting a social media manager social media manager oh, socials in my head now of getting a podcast manager has quite literally saved me hours and hours and hours of time and multiplied my exposure i mean who doesn't want that in business it's so cool what else have you got for us Anne? yeah so that's one way to make money of your podcast that's like indirect 
as a content marketing tool. But there are also more direct ways to make money off your podcast. Um, really common thing, sponsored snippets. Just ads on your podcast. Really common, but you need like a slightly bigger audience for that to make it profitable. So um, that's something that you could do on the long run. However, what you can do right now when you start your podcast, affiliate links. Um, if you talk about, let's say, a book on your podcast episode, it's really easy to just get an affiliate link um, of the book. Like Amazon does affiliate programs, but like many, many businesses do this. And just put the affiliate link in the show notes. Every time that someone buys that book that you've been talking about, you get a percentage of the sale. It's really easy. It's not a lot of work to do that. But if you do that for every episode that you have out there and every product that you um, that you talk about on your on your show, it adds up. So that is a really nice way to make money of your podcast right away. And another one um, is a paid premium man membership. Um, that's also something that you probably need a little uh, bit of an audience for before you can do this. But what you can do is make a paid membership and then members get more content. So longer episodes, extra eBooks or other resources that um, come with the episodes. So that's another way to monetize your podcast for an extra income stream. Love it. And of course, online courses. You know, one of the ways I've been making money from my podcast is, you know, I deliver some information and provide the tips, whether I'm chatting with an expert like Anne or whether I'm there on, on my own. I always then use the opportunity of my podcast to offer a course to my audience. And it's really this simple. You say, hey, I have an amazing online course called How to Create Profitable Online Courses. You can get it for free right now if you go to sarahcorn.com forward slash freedom. And of course, if you go and get that, you can really truly get that course for free <laughs> right now. That will lead you into my business. You see, you may ne have never come across me before. You may have just been finding my name and my brand and my voice for the very first time. Well, that will get you into my business ecosystem. Go and see what happens when you go and sign up to the link. By the way, you definitely 100% get that course for free. There's no catches to that. But there is then a very strategic pathway that I'm going to direct you through. Do you think I'm going to offer you to buy something? Of course I am. <laughs> I'm doing business properly so have a look go through and copy and it's amazing now I love the way you talked about at the beginning there and um, sort of uh, spot these sponsored slots so I've heard these before you know if anyone's anyone's listened to some of the bigger podcasters normally at the beginning they'll open with something like you know hey and this amazing piece of technology to help you create your online courses is and they might name a piece of technology um, they would then say go to this link to grab I don't know a three month for free trial or something like that. And it's their own affiliate link is, it a, is the affiliate way of doing it, I suppose. Or that piece of technology owner may have paid me for me to actually say that on my podcast. So that's how it works, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And would you, so do you sort of think that, um, do you wait until you have a certain number of people? Do you go out today and start contacting people who might like to sponsor a slot on your podcast? How much do people pay for these sponsored slots? Can you kind of elaborate on that a little bit more? Um, so what I actually read yesterday is that um, it doesn't pay that well. It's um, about 25 US dollars per thousand downloads of your podcast. So that's not a lot of money, to be honest. Um, however, there are businesses that do this. Um, I think it's also podcast.co. I know it's Podbean that also offer this. When you um, use them as a hosting platform, they also um, offer these ad services. So if you... Um, if you have a certain amount of downloads, they will contact you uh, or you can contact them and then you can, they help you find a sponsor for your show. So you don't have to do all that by yourself. That's, I see, I never knew that that was a service that was available inside these hosts. Incredible. I'm going to have to go in and do some more clicking if you let me. <laughs> <laughs> don't touch it, Sarah. <laughs> That's it. Don't let me in there. I'll break something. Um, fantastic. Um, so, you know, there's going to be a lot of people listening today and who just, you know, they, they're itching to do this. They, it's been on their to-do list for a million years and they're kind of like, right, I, I want to do this, but I just don't know where to start. 
could you maybe give us like a little, maybe like a little journey? What's, what does the journey look like? What are kind of the main steps in this, in this podcast creation journey? What would I do first? What would I do next? What do I, you know, what does that journey kind of look like? Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing you do, think about your subject, like what topic do you want to talk about? And the more specific, the better, because then you know who your audience will be. Um, then you know how you're going to use this podcast in your business. Is it just a content marketing tool or is it also something you want to monetize in another way? Do you want to use it to expand your network by um, interviewing people? Uh, is it solo episodes or do you do interviews? Stuff like that is really important to think of that before you start because it's really um, good to have that all in place before you start coming up with a name and graphics and stuff like that so that's maybe that's the hardest part because other than that you just get yourself a cover um, image for your podcast um, you can do that yourself in, in Canva or a tool like that, or you can get a graphic oh, designer well, to do it. Canva. What I know, do me too. Canva? Like, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I use Canva a lot for, for stuff like that. Um, so you do that, you pick a hosting platform, and then um, you make sure that all of... Um, all of the hosting platform is set up. So you make sure that it's all connected to Spotify, to Apple Podcasts. Um, and then the first thing you do is you make a teaser episode. So the teaser episode is you telling your audience what the podcast is about. So what are you going to do? Who are you? Uh, why this podcast? What can people expect? Um, so that's the next big step. And from then on, you are just making episodes. And if you're just starting out as a, um, if you're just starting out as a podcast host, I would recommend you to make a content planning for your podcast. Just like most people have a social media content planning, um, I advise you to have that for your podcast as well, especially at the start. So you don't have to freak out and think, oh my God, what am I going to talk about this time? Um, especially when you do solo episodes, if you do interviews, it's also nice to have that so that you know um, when you need to contact new people to interview for your show. Um, however, the topic of the episode will be all set because of the people that you're interviewing. So you don't have to think about that that much. Um, but I would really recommend to have a content planning. So you just don't have to stress about that. You just know, okay, in the month of May, we're going to talk about this on the show. And then in June, we're going to talk about this. And then after that, we'll see. And then at least you know that those two months are all set. Yeah, amazing. That's a, a really amazing overview there. And I really love the focus there on planning what you're going to talk about, because a lot of people go, well, that's all great. It sounds like it's quite easy to do, but I don't know what to talk about. And it's, it's so funny because, you know, you get an expert talking about their topic and you know good luck making them be quiet about it and but they think I just don't know what I'm gonna do I don't know I'm gonna talk about so one of the tips I always give to course creators I mean that's that's who's listening to this podcast right now is to just go back and, and look at what are the, the current top 25 or top 50 questions being asked by your audience right now you know go to answerthepublic.com and type in your topic in there it will curate all of the top questions being asked in Google Google at the moment and just go through that list and pick 50 questions that you can answer. Well, there's your one episode a week for a whole year right there. You know, you're just answering 50 questions and, you know, in there, you're going to give some tips, tell a bit of a story. Maybe you might invite an, a guest in. Uh, to, to help really kind of elaborate on that particular matter if it's not really an area of expertise of yours. But that's it. So you've got to do is what are your audience asking? What are they craving and also, for? Um, sorry. Um, also, guests are a great way to grow your podcast pretty fast as well. Because um, when you have a guest on, your guests will um, share your episode on their channels as well. And everyone that follows that guest, all, all of their audience will be, will be interested in that podcast episode. So they will come on, uh, to listen to your podcast episode. If they like it, like you said, they will binge the whole podcast and you have a new listener. So that's a really easy way to grow your podcast really fast. 
Absolutely. And I think as well, there's something about the dynamic of having somebody else there to chat to. I think when you're first starting, going solo can be a bit terrifying. Whereas when you've got somebody else to just chat with, have a conversation, bounce off of, you know, ask questions to, it makes it so much more relaxed and so much easier for you to flow and go like when you're just, when you're just getting started. Definitely. It's nice for the listeners, I think, as well, to have a different voice to listen to. Um, if it was just you all the time, you know, perhaps so maybe I don't get sick of my own voice, but maybe others would. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, amazing tip. So if, uh, again, for those of uh, those people who are just sort of starting about getting started, do you have any final words of wisdom for anyone thinking about podcasting? Um, just do it. Just start and you will impro- improve your podcast like when you do it, like every episode, every next episode will be better and better and better. And um, just let go of your perfectionism. Like there's no such thing as a perfect podcast. And um, also, if you want to start your podcast, I made a start your podcast checklist. So when you feel like all overwhelmed and oh my God, where where do I have to start? Um, You can uh, download my checklist. Uh, with a link in the show notes, of course, and then um, you have an idea what to think of, uh, what to think about, where to start, and how you can start your own podcast. Uh, amazing. There you are, guys. My actual podcast fairy godmother, Anne Clarson, is giving away her free Start Your Own Podcast checklist. Loves it, right? So you can grab that at sarahcordon.com forward slash start podcast. And uh, you will be able to download that completely free of charge. And uh, of course, Anne is available not too available, right? <laughs> and is available to uh, give you strategy session, coaching around your podcast direction. And of course, uh, maybe there to support you with your podcast management as well. And it's been absolutely amazing having you on the show here. I hope that you don't find it too cringeworthy editing your own voice when you edit the show later. <laughs> No, thank you so much. I really love it to be on a podcast for once instead of only Adam maybe. <laughs> I love it. Bring you out from bring you out from the shadows. It's going to yeah. be done. You do an absolutely fantastic job. Well, and uh, thank you as always for being my podcast fairy godmother and uh, for sharing your tips with everyone here today. And guys, like I said, if you, you are looking to scale, to grow, to make a bigger impact, to reach a wider audience, podcasting is an absolutely incredible way to do it. And adding a next level of awesome is to get a podcast manager to help you do that too so that you are more free to create more episodes more content more training and more courses to sell so don't forget today to go and grab that free start your own podcast checklist at sarahcordon.com forward slash start podcast and don't forget that my online course how to create profitable online courses is currently free of charge over at sarahcordon.com forward slash freedom i cannot wait to see you in the next episode good luck best wishes keep entrepreneur and see you all soon. Bye-bye for now.